Today I'd like to show you how to rig using the physique modifier. We're going to use the biped rig and we're going to rig using physique modifier. Um, I'm going to teach you a few tips just to uh, get you familiar with the rigging system, uh, a few little pointers before we get started and so on. Okay, so here's one of my models, meet Randall, this is quite a low poly model. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at how um, how I can rig Brandle to get him moving and actually get him animated. Okay, so first things first. At the moment, Randall has um, a mesh move applied. Now, mesh move is just going to add loads, and loads more vertexes, which is going to cause me all sorts of problems when I come to uh, texture and render him later on. Uh, if I turn on well not texture when I come to rig him later on. If I turn on edge faces this is the mesh I'm working with at the moment. Now if I was to turn off mesh smooth you can see he's a far boxier there's a little bit less information especially in the head um, and that's fine by me I want it to be sort of less less detail. Now if you have a mesh move or a turbo smooth or something applied it's suggested that you do the rigging beforehand okay so for now I'm just gonna delete my mesh smooth so this is my character, I'd like to rig him so I can animate him walking and so on and so forth. Um, now it's important that you've got the mesh constructed fully. The reason he's in T pose is because it's easier to rig. Um, basically if I was to have the arms down by his side, when I put the skeleton system in below and I'm applying the vertexes and telling them which bones they should affect, it becomes quite difficult um, for the computer to work out whether the hand should be part of the body or so on and so forth, you get a lot more errors. That's why we put the arms and hands as far away from the body as we can. Um, so let's get started. I'm first going to ensure that my character is right bang smack in the middle. That's the most important thing I can start off with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to affect my pivot point only. And I'm going to change my pivot point because I want my character standing perfectly in the middle of my scene uh, on zero, zero, zero. Okay, now obviously you can just center it to object, but what I'd like to do is I'd like my pivot point, so where my character moves from, to be set right down to the bottom of it. Now I could use the align tool, but I'm just going to go by eye and put it there. So it's right at the heel of his foot. Alright, his feet go down a little bit further, but that's just the angle. So where his heel touches the ground, I'm going to center my character there. And bring it across so it's affecting his weight so it's down the middle of his body you'll see why that's relevant in just a second okay so now I've come out there turned off effect pivot only because I want to actually move the character and now I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard so it sends my camera for me now what I'm going to do is I want my character here to be centered on this grid now you can see my character is quite large but that's because he's a human sized character so what I'm going to do in XYZ here this is the coordinates of where my car my character is currently modelled uh, is currently positioned so this is based on the pivot point that's why I put the pivot point to the bottom because I want him to be standing perfectly on that mesh you'll see why when we bring a bit biped in, in a second so I'm going to change that to zero change that one to zero Y and then I'm going to change my Z axis to zero so I've got the move tool selected to do that and you can see Randall is now standing perfectly right bang smack in the middle of that grid and you can see it in top viewport front viewport and left viewport okay now that's an important factor because we're about to bring in our biped uh, and the biped will be drawn from zero 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 as well so to get to biped we're in the create window we come all the way across to the systems tab and under here we've got biped a biped is like a skeleton system for the human body okay and what I'm going to do, you can do it in whatever you put you want, but I'm going to click and drag and drag me out, myself out, a biped just by clicking and drag him. And when you drag up, it will set his height. Now don't worry too much if it doesn't fit properly yet. And you see it's added all these objects to my scene, biped head, biped calf, finger, foot, so on and so forth. Now my character has one, two, three, four, five fingers, so you'll notice down here I've got how many links do we want, so I'm going to have five fingers now my character, I don't know if you can see let's zoom right in here's the fingers, I'm going to have change that right down, you could change it I'm going to change it to five um, okay and then I've got finger links so 
we can look at my fingers and see well realistically I think we should have three links because it could bend in three places now obviously the more detail you add the harder it is to make sure that they're correct and that they're all assigned but I want mine to be fairly robust fairly detailed I've also got these spine links here and I can change those down you can see I've got spine so where can my spine twist and turn alright now for a character that's not particularly that detailed as mine I'm gonna change mine down to something like two uh, my leg links are, are fine at three I can see the kneecaps are a little bit above where I've I've made the geometry for my knees um, and then I've got my toes now the toes I can't actually take the toes away I have to have at least one toe but at the moment I don't have any toes because my character is wearing shoes so I'm just gonna leave that at one and I'm going to bring back my toe links to one as well because I'm not actually going to attach my toes to anything now if you really wanted to have a bit of sort of play in the end of your shoe or something like that you could attach it to to the toe but I don't really need the toe ponytail links are useful if we're doing things like lip sync and stuff like that um, you can actually repurpose them for like yeah like I say like lip sync and things like that but for now we don't particularly need need those right so we've made ourselves a rig these aren't attached at the moment it doesn't fit my body yet my character's body but what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at how we do that so I'm going to come into my character I've clicked on my character not the biped but I've clicked on the character I'm going to hit alt and x and what that does is it makes my character see through okay so now I can see through, I can see what I'm doing with the bones I'm just going to have a look at what I'm doing with the bones now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the layers so we're just going to order this about so we've got our biped that measures our character uh, we've got to change that around in a minute but we're going to make our life a bit easier for ourselves and we're going to make ourselves some new layers so to do that I go out to the manage layers tool and at the moment I've got default layer so I've got all of my objects on one layer what I can do is I can create a new layer this first layer I'm going to call my character okay I can open that layer and you see the type so I've got bones I've got nodes which help and here's my character and what I can do is I can drag my character and I could move it to a new layer now at the moment I don't have anywhere I do have somewhere I've got it at the bottom forgive me I changed the name so what I can do is I can move my character down into that new layer okay now he's safe and sound that now now the bonus of being able to do something like that would be that I can turn on and off that layer I'm able to freeze that layer so I can't accidentally work on it it also gives me full control now if you wanted to create another new layer and move all your bone rigs onto that layer it would be absolutely fine by default you can't change the name of the uh, the zero layer for your default layer the active layer is symbolized by the one in blue so anything I was to model now would be modeled into the character layer because that's my active layer okay so what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at our rig the thing you have to bear in mind is when you want to control this biped you don't just click on one part of the biped the important part is this center bit here okay and you'll notice its name is BIP001 biped 001 it's this square right in the middle that doesn't assign to any bones you've got the pelvis here it's inside the pelvis between the two uh, the two thighs at the top here so I've got this BIP01 you can select it from your selection over here from the name conventions you want to open this come to the motion tab and the motion tab gives us control over this okay so if we were to come into figure mode here this is the mode where we can actually edit our biped our, our rig so that we can actually start to get this rig to try and fit the character before then we start applying animation to it so all we need to do is I want you to come into figure mode turn this on and now we're going to start scaling some of these bones so they actually fit Randall the character here so before I start to do this what I want to do is I want to come up here to my manage layers and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freeze my character okay just freeze him and all that means is I can't select him anymore I can only select the bones it means I won't accidentally select my character alright I might maximize this screen I hope my viewport catches up with me I'm going to turn off shaded edges uh, I'm going to ensure I'm just in shaded that's fine for me okay bipod I want now what I can do I must make it clear originally what I'm going to do is I'm going to move something but I'm going to ensure symmetrical zone which basically means when I do something on one side it will happen on the other side as well 
up here we got view I'm going to change this to local now what that does is it changed my tool so that it will move locally it will move about the axis in which I've selected so it will select select this bone and rather than moving to view it will move local so it will it will move in the direction that the arm is meant to go so if I were to turn on symmetrical and then I was to rotate this arm you can see not only is one arm moving both arms are currently moving alright you see that yeah okay so that's just an example we'll come back and we'll move these in a minute just to sort of set that up but the first things I would suggest is we try and get the knees in place try and get the pelvis in place the neck in place and we try and sort of line this up so at least he fits um, his skeleton okay so what I'm going to do first things first is we're going to use the scale tool for this we're going to scale everything up so that it completely fits where it's meant to go now what you want is sort of a skeleton that comes out of ever so slightly so um, what I mean by that is sort of pops it outside of the body so intersects with the body to make sure to make sure these joints are a little bit bigger so you should be able to see your character and my viewport catches up with itself you should be able to see your character and then the bone structure will be popping out a little bit it just makes it easier when you're attaching the vertexes to it later on so let's do this let's try and get the pelvis in the correct place so his pelvis actually is a little bit lower down than where I created it originally so what I'll do is I'll come onto this one because this is how I move the whole character biped I'm going to move the pelvis into the correct place Okay, just going to have a quick look at, I don't want to move the leg in, I apologise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that in so I can move these joints, scale that so it's a little bit bigger, scale that down a little bit, scale that axis in, okay, that joint's not possibly quite the size I want it to be, so I can move that axis make it stick out in that one so what you're seeing here on here is that it's, it's coming out of, out of the body a little bit you're never going to see this bone structure it's going to be invisible we're not going to make it renderable okay um, so it doesn't matter too much if it's sticking outside the body don't think of this as an actual skeleton that you'd actually be able to see that's part of it this is just helping it to be able to move all right so I still think these legs could do with fitting in the body a little bit better so let's move this across something like that alright now these are the knees and you can see those lines that I've made for the geometry there so up to you you could click and hit my symmetry one obviously you've got opposite I can click the symmetry and what I can do is I can change the size of these legs up or down make sure I get those legs those knees right bang smack in the middle quite happy with that scale those back in they seem to have warped a little bit okay that's fine so those are in quite a nice place. Now you'll notice, right, so opposite. Now you'll notice those legs. The ankle joints aren't in the right place. So here's sort of my ankle. What I want to do is bring that up a little bit. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use scale tool again, scale those up, or I can scale about this axis here. It's all trial and error, you just have to keep playing around until you're quite happy that you've got the final finished results. Now you can see the, the biped is actually a slight bend, and my character is not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight both these feet, both my ankles, well, both the foot bone, and I am going to straighten those up. So I'm going to move them back to where I expect them to be. Or I could even drag them down, and that straightens it up a little bit. So it gives me a much better idea. Uh, I can actually see my foot possibly is a fraction too big okay now I probably can come a, a little bit a little bit up possibly doesn't matter too much if it's not bang on but look, let's scale this foot up and let's scale it about that way a little bit so it's a bit more squashed okay it totally will depend on the model that you've made so I can see my legs are roughly in place so is this I can go up, ensure, select both those, and like I said before, you're going to ensure that it cuts through the mesh. Let's just have a look. I could probably walk these up a little bit more, so I'll make these cuts a bit bigger. It just makes my life a little bit easier when it will come to adding the physique modifying a bit and attaching them to vertexes, alright? So a little bit like that. I don't want to go in that direction because you can see it pushes down the leg. It's not too bad, alright? So I'm happy with that. Let's go up. I chose two spine links. 
and you can see if I scale these up and down it will move the whole top part of the body with it so you need to be in full control when you're doing this bit the most important thing is that my neck measures up so I'm going to make that one about that tall make that one about that tall and you should be able to see there my neck bone starting to be in the correct place let's also warp them Oop, not in that direction but in that direction so it's bigger than cactus body so it just sort of sticks out a little bit alright what we're probably going to have to do here is the vertex is it won't intuitively probably know to apply those for us so we might have to do that ourselves click on the neck here I can move that into a place I'm happy with click on the arms you see I'm still in local up here um, because I'm in local that's exactly what happens it's going to move one about the other it thinks it's doing me a favour ok if I come into view it'll actually let me move those down independently it's important to remember to do one and not the other because obviously the human body is symmetrical so it's always important to do one and the other at the same time so let's ensure that we start to get this now the biped again comes in at a sort of a more natural pose there's a slight bend to the arm slight bend to the legs so we need to bear that in mind when we're correcting the size and shape the head by standards normal size my cartoonified character is quite a large head so I'm quite happy with that I'm going to scale that neck up a little bit for me alright well, I could move that across but my character is quite his head was quite front heavy shall we say there wasn't too much at the back the cranium part and the front bit was quite large so that's fine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mo just move these hands here just going to move them so they fit into W. So you can see if I select both hands at the same time, it actually starts to become a little bit difficult because I'm moving one without the other. And one's bending, one's not. But if I had local on, they both go at the same time. Right, so ensure you've got local on. You can move that. So you've got full control over it, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm going to click on one. I've still got local turned on. I'm just going to ensure my arm is straight. doesn't matter too much this time about my symmetry because all I'm doing is making the arm straight. Yep, quite happy with that. You'll notice, though, my elbow isn't in the right position. The wrist is vital to get that in the right position, so we need to ensure that we correct these. So I'm going to ensure I've got symmetry turned on. Scale tool again first thing I'm going to do is scale so that my wrist is in the correct place and I'm going to scale up sort of the bicep shoulder area so that it intersects and comes out of the body alright so shoulders in the right position there shoulders uh, elbow sorry is in the right position there let's click on the wrist again remembering to turn on opposite uh, turn on your symmetry I can't stress that enough a lot of people do manage to forget that and trust me it's frustrating when you come back and go oh god I've only done one side of the body and I forgot been there, done that. So I'm going to try and line my wrist up. This is sort of the sleeve. My wrist is about here. I want the hand to sort of start in this direction. Let's just double check. Yep. Okay. Let's click on the actual hand, the palm itself. Scale that up a little bit there. I'm happy with that. I do want to scale. I click on that wrist up a little bit so it comes out. So you can see it's intersecting out, like I said and now last but not least I need to line these fingers up. Now fingers can be a little bit tricky but you need to make sure you're rotating the right axis so it looks right it looked right, it looks right in that view let's just double check if I press Z on my keyboard to zoom in for me is that intersecting with the finger correctly might need more control so if I just zoom in yeah that kind of looks like it's following it, it might might need straighten up where my fingers are straight okay so that's good I can see that if I click on here, drag that, just to ensure that my fingers are following the hands. Alright. See the mesh? Let's move that. Yeah, I can rotate that now. I'm not practicing my breach, I need to remember to. Symmetrical, so that the other one's coming with me. 
I'll change that to view for now. Ensure I've got symmetrical on. And what I'm going to do, oops, sorry, I'm going to ensure I've got local on so that I can move them independently. Making sure that's on. I'm just going to move that so it's actually inside the ham. And I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate so that the finger matches up. Wrong finger. So that the nub, there you go, sort of matches up inside the finger. So you see it goes inside the finger. Let's ensure that we get the angle correct as well. Symmetrical. See, doesn't matter how many times you talk about it, it's still easy to forget. Just going to ensure length is correct. Move this finger up. Get those joints sort of in the right place. Doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit there. Might increase the width a little bit there. Don't want to go too much. These fingers are actually close, close together. And when I told you about the T pose before, you need to remember that um, you have to be aware that that fingers are probably some of the trickiest area when you come to rigging because actually it's going to want to try and link vertexes from here to here and fingers are often one of the areas that do um, that do get corrupted unfortunately so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video here for a sec while I complete all these fingers obviously I've got to rotate the thumb into position as well because it's just added that for me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off put all the fingers in place just as I've done here ensuring I've got symmetry turned on and then I'm going to complete complete the finger uh, all the fingers to the hand and then we're going to be ready to uh, add our physique modifier and start to actually get this rig working okay so if you just want to carry on with that for now I'll see well I'll see you in no time at all because I'm only going to pause okay okay welcome back um, well, there's no time passed in theory but hey right so basically what we should have now is our fingers and thumbs all inside one another. Now the thumb if you look at your own fingers and you bend them the finger can has three bones where we can bend it in sort of three directions. Uh, you can make sort of a, a 90 degree and then your fingertip can go down as well but the thumb you can only really bend it in a right angle. So therefore what I've done to comprehend that is I've, I've made the uh, the last bone, the last link of my bone come out so that I can only bend that thumb realistically in two directions alright and it's exactly the same for the other side. So those fingers should line up, the rest of the body lines up okay so now what we are ready is we are ready to connect these two things together because at the moment that biped moves independently of my character so what we need to do is we need to come up to layers you can unfreeze your character click on the character and what we're going to do is we're going to add a physique modifier to them physique starts with a ph okay so i've got my character selected making sure i don't definitely don't have mesh smooth on there what i'm going to do is click on the modifier drop down list and I'm going to choose myself a physique modifier, P H Y, physique. Okay. Now, just adding that modifier doesn't automatically connect these things together. We need to do that ourselves. I'm just going to close that. So, what I'm going to do is press this big button here, attach to node. This is saying, well, I need to attach it to the rig. So, I'm going to press attach to node. And I've got two options now. It gives me this key. I can either click on the biped, BIP01, the bit I told you about, the blue square, or and far easier, I can press H on my keyboard and that will bring up this menu to pick object right bank smack at the top, BIP01 I could open that if I wanted to see all the the files below but I want BIP01 so just click on that press pick and this will bring you up this window now for what we want to use it for and for what we're quite happy the default settings will be absolutely fine so what I want you to do is I want you to press initialize and that has connected the two together now you could see running through my character is sort of this orange line. If I just turn off the visibility of my character, of my rig, sorry, you can see a line that goes through. Now that that line is the physique line. That's what we're going to attach all of the skin to. Okay, so we're sort of technically skinning and rigging. We're going to attach all of the skin to those rigs. It will have done that by default for us, but what we're going to do is we're going to see how well this has worked. So let's turn back on our rig. Let's just have a quick look what that's done for us. All right. So I'm going to click just say for example on this bicep here. I'm going to turn on rotate. I'm going to rotate that arm and you can see that that is all attached. It hasn't left any points behind. It's all attached. I've moved my character. Okay. 
congratulations, you've managed to move your character. That's a good sign. It doesn't mean everything's working properly necessarily, but it is at least working, which is fantastic. So I now want to click on the hand, and I can control that hand. So I'm actually going to change it to view, and I'm going to rotate that hand. Oh, and the bin works nicely as well. All right, do his exercises. That's great. All right, so he's attached. You can go into some detail if you want and check out all his legs. You can really thoroughly check this through, which you will do in a minute. And I can check, I can move his leg up. And the body came with it, okay? So far, because it was quite low poly, it's looking quite nice. Like I said, the more polygons you got, the more detail you've got, the harder this bit gets, because the computer has intuitively worked out for me which vertexes should be attached to which bone. The more vertexes you have, the harder time it has working out which bone it should be attached to. Okay. Now we can fix these points ourselves. We've got that. Um, we've got that opportunity, which we will do in a minute. All right. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to really see what needs fixing. We need to uh, ascertain what we can fix. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Auto Key. Now Auto Key is the animation software. Uh, if you haven't had a look at it before, please have a look at my tutorials in the future. I'm going to do some animation tutorials for you about auto key and set key. Now auto key sets keys automatically for us. You have this giant key here where you can set them yourself and that comes under set key where I can choose what I'd like to set. Alright, if I want to set my own key I move something then I set it. Once I've created with auto key, once I've created a change it will automatically record a keyframe there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to highlight everything set a keyframe at frame 0 where it looks like this. I'm going to zoom to frame 25 Alright, and then I'm going to have a move around just to have a look what's happening. Uh, and I'm going to click on some of my mesh, so for example my foot. i move this here. Now, if you're finding you're accidentally clicking, keys might not be in figure mode. Yeah, of course I'm in figure mode. That doesn't really help. We have to come out of figure mode, so click on the body here. The BIP01, come into motion panel, and you remember we're still in figure mode, so if I turn that off, I could then start animating and moving it around just to see how it works, and then you could press play and watch how it works, okay? So let's just go back to when I was in a straight line. I'm going to come out of figure mode, frame zero. I like my frame being there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll, let's say, frame zero, I want that. Let's just do a reverse. All we're doing here is we're just going to quickly test, make sure everything's tickety boo working fine. So I've created two keyframes with a move there. Let's have a look. Play that. Okay, yeah, I didn't notice any sort of vertexes out of place or anything like that. Uh, let's just finish that. Alright, it seems to have linked quite well. I if you're having any problems at all, now's not the time to worry about it. We're about to have a look at how we reassign all of those all of those pieces back to one another okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at uh, how do we accurately assign each vertex to a bone alright now it's up to you what you could have done as I was doing the animation thing was absolutely move your character into positions that it would never be able to move into so rotate the head the arms and everything like that explode it out as it's called and you could really see well actually this vertex isn't applied and this one isn't applied to the right one and so on and so forth but until I've shown you what to look for I don't feel like uh, it's the best thing to show you just yet so I'm going to come back into physique um, and basically you've got this little plus button next to physique here which gives us all of our options all right now what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to hide my biped rig. I don't need my biped rig at the moment because I'm not planning on moving any of it. So I'm just going to hide it. Yep. So we're just back to having our character uh, and you can see the physique taking place below it. So if I go to this modifier, I've clicked on it, there are a few options come up. Now envelope, if I click on envelope, it basically means if I click on one of these links you can see the area it's directly affecting and the area it has influence over. All right. So basically you're going to get varying colored kind of lines, dark orange ones, the inner ones, basically. Um, and you can click on them and you can change the strength, how far it affects, if it affects, basically if I change the strength up it's going to affect more, if I change the strength down it's going to affect less of an area, alright. You can use the radial scales and parent and child overlaps to move it around. So if you wanted to move this vertex to somewhere else because you weren't happy where the bone was placed, that would be fine. That's but I assigned my biped correctly and I'm very happy that it works. 
basically I find vertex mode is the best thing to select so I use basically I select because it uses more accuracy so I use this uh, different vertexes can be different colors uh, basically if I hold control A you will see a varying colors now the colors we're looking out for and specifically are the blue ones blue ones means they're not attached to anything okay a blue one basically means this vertex here this point of the body hasn't been attached to any bones correctly and this is the area I'd be a little bit scared about between the spine but I can see that's attached nicely okay uh, a lighter red one as you can see sort of up here means that it's attached to one part of the body or one one bone okay and then the darker red ones are attached to more than one now the fingers remember what I said before they can be a bit tricky these are the parts where you need to start wearing so sometimes these right you can see these light red ones are only attached to one bone they're only attached to this bone here these ones, these these fingers here, these vertexes that are dark red, you run the danger of them accidentally being attached to this here. So how do we bypass that? We'll have a look in a sec. So you've got the three colours, alright? You can actually turn them off, have a look at which colours you're looking for and so on and so forth. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave them as they are. So, you can select a vertex so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate on the thumb I'm going to select a vertex now at the moment I've got the square selection on I can change my selection method up here I come to this one it basically means I can draw click and drag and I can draw any shape I like alright so I'm just going to click on all those shapes uh, okay and I can assign them to link so if I assign them to link I would click on that link and it would say I want them to be part of that I want them to be assigned to that link which is pretty standard that they will be assigned okay or I can remove them from link so if I click remove from link I can then click and drag around all of these and that means these vertexes are no longer attached to any of those now I didn't move my fingers around to check whether they were or not but you may want to go into detail with your biped on and check are all my vertexes attached to the correct attached to the correct thing so basically bend the bones and the fingers make sure the fingers are moving so if you bend this bone here when you've got biped on and this finger moves you know you've got a problem okay so I've selected just these vertexes I'm going to go to remove from link and I'm going to remove those from all of those vertexes and this is a step I like to repeat for the fingers now I'm being quite rough and sort of approximating really I'm not being particularly careful as I do this I would suggest that you were a little bit more careful so I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to unselect those I'm going to unselect those ones as well and I'm just going to click on remove from link and just as I did before I want to remove all of those faces from all of these fingers I don't want them to be attached to any of the other bones now there may be an occasion where you want a bone to be attached or a vertex to be attached to more than one so when we get close here we want some of these vertexes will be attached to both the wrist and these bones because they're going to be influenced by both of them now you have a human body you can bend your hands and your arms and so on and so forth to see how these vertexes applied but as I said a blue vertex is the one we're looking out for now I think if I check this through I haven't actually come up with any blue vertexes just yet now no I don't seem to have any but what I'm going to do is create my own one to show you how to apply a blue vertex move it back okay so what I'm going to do and the problems here of course I'm going to select on this uh, actually I will select I'll select one that's just attached to one okay so if I select say the end of one of my fingers alright so I've got fiddly zoom today I think due to the size of my objects it's quite large my computer's struggling to rotate around it but if you keep pressing Z it will assign to it okay right I've got this one light red object here now if I remove from link I'm going to remove from that link you see it's become blue it doesn't seem to harm me at the moment doesn't seem to do anything too much what you may find is that you've got some vertexes so your finger looks like this and your vertex will be way over here and it's all misshapen now that's because that vertex would be trying to assign itself to more than one and it will misshape your object that is a sure sign that you've got vertexes that are assigned to the wrong bone because you've got a misshapen object okay now let me just show you the problem of this blue vertex at the moment we're not seeing really anything happening but if I come to manage layers turn on here turn this on I'm just going to come out of vertex mode just for a second. Now, if I was to click on the bone, okay, he says, if I click on my bone here, 
All right, and now I move that bone, it will leave that vertex behind. And you can see that's happening there, okay? You can see, oh dear, I've left the vertex behind. Now that's a sure sign that you've got the vertex not attached to somewhere, all right? So we need to ensure that you come to vertex, I select that vertex, and I'm going to assign it to a link, and I'm going to click on the link I want it to be assigned to, and now it's back assigned to that link. It doesn't matter too much that I assign the other one as well, because that was already assigned, I haven't really changed anything there. Now you go through the whole mesh and you check, is everything in place? Now, if you were very careful at the start, like I was, and I made sure that all my knees were in place, wrists were in place, ankles were in place, and so on and so forth, you've done half the work already, and hopefully the physique has taken place, and it's taken shape, and it's working quite well. Um, and everything should be in order. Now there might be a few parts that you haven't quite sort of um, attached in the correct way you want. Sometimes around the waist and things like that, they can be a bit of a problem. But you'll soon find out when you start to animate your object and see how it works. So now this part is finished, and we're quite happy that all of our character is attached correctly to the mesh. We can add our mesh smooth if we would like, see how that looks, or a turbo smooth, it's totally up to you, which is your preference. Okay, I'm going to add my turbo smooth on. I'm going to hide myself my rig lag, because I don't want to see that when I come to render. And I'm just going to have a quick look at how my character looks, okay? Doesn't seem to be any different. The rig doesn't seem to have stretched or warped any of it. If I had sort of these fingers out of shape or anything like that, I would know that maybe the rig hasn't taken place properly, it hasn't taken shape, but everything's attached, everything seems to be connected, and that was because we put the turbo smooth on after. You can see now just how dense that mesh is. Imagine trying to connect all of those rather than that. If I was trying to connect all of those vertices, like some of you might be trying to do, it becomes very difficult, and it's very hard for the computer to work out exactly where each one of those is supposed to go. So what we can do now is we can turn it back on. Now it's up to you. You can either do this two ways. You can hide these when you come to render or you can select all your mesh and you can ensure that all of it doesn't um, all of it doesn't render. So to do that let's just ensure my character excuse me. Right. Basically what you want to make sure is that if the zoom works that your character isn't your biped isn't renderable. It means it can still exist in the scene. So I've got all my biped selected. You can right click, object properties, and you've got this option here called renderable. You can turn that off basically. And that means if I quickly just do a side render F9, it's not there. Alright, the lighting system's horrible in my scene. But you can see that the rig wasn't there, which is fantastic. So we are now able to test it now as before I moved around the mesh had a play around it worked absolutely fine for me what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and click on the biped in the middle I will ensure that I've frozen my character again so don't accidentally click on him you can freeze him because you don't need to select him I've got biped selected and come to motion and this time I'm going to come out of figure mode and I'll turn on footstep mode okay now footstep mode Basically, this is the stage where I can actually add some some footsteps. Uh, I can add a walk cycle to my character, and this is going to be uh, the be all and end all. This is going to tell me exactly if all of those vertex are applied correctly. So I've got how many footsteps am I going to take? Uh, I'm just going to take six for now, uh, and I can basically set up all of my footsteps to make sure they work correctly. Okay, so I can have a walk, run, or a jump, a double footstep, so on and so forth, and I've got create footsteps at current frame. Well, my current frame is zero. It's going to press create footsteps at current frame. Okay, now that gives me the option to put the footsteps down if I wish. I don't wish to do that. I want to create multiple footsteps. I'm going to create this one. And this is going to do it for me. You've got stride width, so you can control how big a character's stride is going to be, what their walk sort of looks like. You've got a lot of stride length, stride height, so on and so forth. Are they going to bring their knees up when they walk? What's the timing between each each step and so on and so forth? Does he start left footed or right footed and so on? I'm just going to leave that, okay? So start a current frame, start for the last footstep. I'm going to leave it start current frame. So all I've done is change the number of footsteps just to give me an idea. Press OK. All that does is that sets the footsteps out. It hasn't created them yet, but it's created the footsteps. This is where my character is going to step. But 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 six footsteps there. One, two, you can see there, three, four, five, six. So it's counting those two as two, as two of my footsteps already without even moving. 
And the last thing we need to do is create keys for inactive footsteps because these are inactive. You've made them, but we haven't keyed them yet. And keys down here, so it's got to set keys for them. It's got to work that out. So what I'm going to do is set the keys for those active footprints. And you can see my character moved into sort of an idle pose. Okay, you can deactivate them if you really wanted, but we're quite happy. Now, if you want to see what we've just done, let's zoom out slightly to the side, press play, and my character walk cycle. Alright. Now my character, my computer is trying to save itself some memory, so therefore it's rendering just the box. But hopefully your character on your screen is showing you the full character okay you're seeing exactly what it looks like now if I change the viewport it will just play the animation in that viewport alright so I can change these up excuse me I can change these up realistic if I wish make sure I'm still playing them seems to work a bit better with realistic when I'm shaded we've lost it again but hey you can see it isn't leaving any vertexes behind it's all connected that's great, I've created myself an animation there without having to keyframe it, I've used footsteps, I can make a walk cycle, and we're going to look at some more animation tips, how to make looping walk cycles and so on and so forth in the future. Okay, just as a, a last final tip before I go, you've now successfully rigged, I would suggest that you don't just use a standard walk cycle when you come to do your animation. You'll notice if I move ahead here, your character's very rigid, his body's very still, his arms just swing down by his side, a bit like a robot, okay? Richard Williams, a book, a wonderful book, The Animated Survival Guide, and you need to have a look at the walk cycles in there. There's many that show different character, okay? Just study people in the real world, study how they walk, and you start to get an idea about how people move uh, and how they express their personality through these walk cycles. There's five important steps in the walk cycle. So you've got the initial contact where the foot is hitting the floor, then you've got the weight coming down onto that foot, so the same foot you put the weight down you've got your pass pose where the back leg is coming through and past the standing leg you're getting ready to transfer the weight in this one so your foot's starting to come up you're preparing for this foot to hit the ground as it's passed off and ready and then you've got the initial contact with the left foot on the ground and then you cycle and repeat this is how we loop okay this is just simply how this walk cycle is working okay but you can start to add some personality into the walk cycle by dropping shoulders you can give them a limp you start to give them some kind of swagger or something to their walk that gives them some kind of personality okay but that was how you rig and skin uh, a model using the physique modifier hopefully it's been beneficial for you um, and I look forward to talking more about animation in future thanks very much